to record again. Um, just a couple more questions here, mate. Sorry for taking up all your time. I can imagine you need a sleep, like you said. I don't mind. Um, it's all right. Where were we at? Uh, all right, so we we were in the middle of uh, blockchain not being the solution. Moving on from there, um, what does the future look like? in your mind, what are, what is a potential solution to this problem? Uh, this skin? Well, you, there's only three things that you can do to try and fight scams. So I'm, I'm an expert on this shit. I'm really smart and I've put a lot of thought into this and I'm going to describe the situation better to you than anyone has ever done it before. So here it goes. One, everything is not a scam. Some things go to zero because life is hard. If you try and start a new restaurant, likely to fail. Why? Most new restaurants fail. That's how it is. Does that mean it was a scam to try and start a new restaurant? No, it just means it was hard. So in my opinion, scam involves negative intentions. What is, what is the mind space of the person performing the activity? Are they really trying hard to make the world a better place? Or are they just trying to steal your damn money? Two, Ponzi schemes. Ponzi schemes fail because they make people promises that they cannot keep. They pretend to have some profitable business activity and then they pay people rewards based on that activity. But in reality, there isn't such an activity. It's a lie. They're taking funds from new investors and stealing those funds and using them to pay pretend rewards to the people that got in earlier. That's why they're illegal, because they fail in that format. Now, is cryptocurrency a Ponzi scheme? Depends on which cryptocurrency you're talking about. Does Bitcoin promise you that its price is going to go up? Nope, it doesn't. Price goes up and down. Are there currencies that promise you some type of return? Promises of returns? Probably scammy. Probably, you know, impossible. However, there are cryptocurrencies that... that give you returns in that unit, right? So if you're a Bitcoin miner, you get paid rewards in Bitcoin rewards. If you're a Bitcoin miner, you get paid rewards in Bitcoin fees. If you're a Hex, hex Hex.com, if you're a Hex staker, you get paid rewards in Hex. Now, does anyone in the world know what the value of Hex is outside that system? No. The system can't know. The system that runs Hex doesn't know what its value is to other people outside in the real world because it just does its thing, right? Like your car doesn't know what it is worth. If it's a car, it does car things. It doesn't know whether it's worth a million dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, twenty-five dollars. Doesn't know. So it's important to know the difference between an honest cryptocurrency and a scam, between an honest business and a scam. Another thing people say all the time is uh, multi-level marketing. It's MLM. Now, why don't like people MLMs? Why don't they like them? Well, because a lot of times they go to zero. And in my opinion, something that I advertise is you have the maximum number of middlemen between the product or service and the user. And how is that efficient for the world to insert 50 middlemen between the product and the user? That's retarded. That's the opposite of good. That is the opposite of efficient. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies were designed to get rid of middlemen So there's you and your wallet, them and their wallet. You transact with each other. You don't have to beg someone for permission. Please let me send my money. That's faster, more efficient, has better business hours, usually lower fees. So that nuance, that understanding between the difference between a scam, a Ponzi scheme, an MLM, and the intention, very, very useful to get the language right. Now, okay, now you got the language right. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to get the world to have less scams in it? There's only three things. Three. One, you could give the enforcement guys that work at the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, uh, the SEC, Security Exchange Commission, uh, advertising standards bureaus, depending on where you live. You could give those guys more money and hope that they're able to make a larger impact. Now, in my opinion, that won't work. Why? Well, one, There's a lot of countries where the law just isn't enforced very well. And because of interstate commerce and across borders commerce, you'll find regulatory arbitrage that just has all the scams operate from one area 
And then that leaves the regulators in the good areas rather powerless. Second, the laws primarily only allow the money to be gotten back after it's already been stolen. In which case you can't, uh, you can't give people the money back, it's already lost. So the majority of people have been scammed, they never get their money back. Even if the founders go to jail, those people never get their money back. Well, that's a terrible system. So funding such a system that has such bad, there's like a buck in here. Um, funding such a system that has such bad outcomes for the users, it's not good. So giving the regulators more money, probably not gonna work because their hands are kind of tied. They can only act after the fact. Now, what about trying to educate the users to stop being so stupid? Well, people don't have a stop being stupid switch. They tend to remain stupid for a very long time. So, you know, if you think about how stupid the average person is, you know, let's say their IQ is 100, which in the United States it is, uh, half the people stupider than that. That's what average means. It means that half the people are stupider because it's a standard bell curve distribution. It's not asymmetrical. So what's the third thing? All right, Richard, you told us that funding the regulators with more money is probably not going to work because jurisdictional arbitrage and post facto uh, enforcement. You've told us that trying to just yell at people and hope that they get smarter doesn't work because, well, I mean, think about it this way. Even if you could yell as effectively as the scammers themselves, the scammers are better funded. For every dollar you spend convincing someone to not get scammed, it costs you $1. For every dollar the scammer spends trying to scam somebody, he makes two or three. It's asymmetrical. You're going to lose. The, the power amplification is on his side, the force multiplication. So you're going to get outcompeted for eyeballs by the scammers for the same reason they can pay all these referrers and fake shills to, to shill their garbage because it's profitable for them to do so. Well, what's the third thing? What's the thing that could actually work? The thing that I advertise that no one else is advertising because I understand the space better than apparently anybody else. You get these people's money out of their hands and into something honest and good so that they don't have it to lose on something horrible. What upsides does that have? One, it scales because you've got, you know, if you put a dollar into marketing, your good non scam thing, then you could make more than a dollar back. You have the opportunity to be profitable and then ramp up your operations. Two, it works before these people have lost all their money, not after. Three, it, it forces them to not get scammed because they don't have extra money left over to get scammed with. So you might do better to stop the world from being scammed by advertising index funds in the S&P 500, uh, biotech funds, uh, honest cryptocurrencies, as long as people know that they are volatile. You know? You know, so for instance, with Hex, we have attracted influencers from scams. And then they stopped promoting scams and start, uh, started promoting hacks. Now that doesn't mean they'll do that forever, but for the portion of time that they promoted hacks instead of something else, that's people getting into an honest, secure, locked contract with no humans in charge of it, no humans in control, security audited twice, economics audited once, 100% uptime, while everything else is failing all around us. Problems everywhere, failure everywhere. Hex is doing wonderfully. So, you know, that actually scales, that actually works to get people into something honest, whether it's hex or something else. It's vastly superior to get people to not be scammed than to yell at them because it doesn't work. To fund the regulators that can only act after the fact, it doesn't work. This is the only solution that I found that could actually work. Okay, but um, I, I had a read on the site, the hex website, um, mm -hmm. And obviously I looked around a little and I mean, you've had your fair share of uh, fingers pointed at you as well, right? How, uh, yeah. you, you know, yeah, everyone, say, everyone says I'm a scammer. It's great. How, how do you, awesome. <laughs> I mean, again, it comes with the territory, right? People are fucking assholes. They're garbage. They're scumbags. They're maggots. I'm so tired of hearing this shit. Like, okay. Do you want to know what scams have? victims lots and lots of victims that's why we don't like scams because they create victims who has richard schuler ever done business with in his entire fucking life that hasn't got a fantastic deal one person name me one person in my entire fucking life that hasn't got a good deal working with me there's no names there's no victims 
Well, then where do all these scam accusations come from? From slanderous, libelous assholes. Just blows my mind. What's my... Yet, jealousy, mostly. Like, (laughs) I retired in 2003, traveled the world, lived in a hotel for five years, have made so much fucking millions of dollars over and over again, different industries, serial success. I guess these people thought I was one of them, right? So I had a YouTube channel. It's like got 50,000 followers. I got 63,000 on Twitter. People thought I was an influencer. I'm not an influencer. I'm a fucking leader of industry. I've you know made hundreds of millions of dollars in sales and hired and fired hundreds of people. I'm a fucking boss. But these idiots, they thought you know I was their equal or something. So then they go see me create a billion dollar cryptocurrency and they get very jealous, very angry because they haven't created shit. So it's like, and these are and then, and then, industry leaders that you're talking about. Yes, right, exactly. Losers that flap their lips with referral links that have never made money trading, only lost. Like just, just it's hilarious to me. So I tell everyone the truth, and I'm always right. And then these idiots that promote terrible, wrong things all the time, they have the gall, the audacity to speak ill of me. It's like, what the fuck? You know, you know how many people I've convinced to stop trading? Tons. You know how many people I've convinced to stop playing poker, to live better, healthier lifestyles? Thousands. And I get thank you messages all the time from people whose lives who I have positively affected. And then I'm called out by these scumbags. It's just fucking hilarious to me. You know, it's just, I don't. For instance, I used to be a Bitcoin maximalist. I didn't like everybody losing money on all these shit coins. But then the game changed. DeFi happened and some components of DeFi are actually amazing. So the fact that you can replace stable coins, like if, if in Bitcoin you want to get out of it and de-risk and get into a stable coin, you've got to beg a central counterparty, please, I'm going to send you my Bitcoin, please send me money back. Let, send me dollars back, please. Sometimes they say, no, fuck you. We're not doing it. But in DeFi, if you want to get out into a stable coin, you can do that. You can get out with no permission asked. If you want to get back in, you can get back in. You want to trade for something else, you can trade for something else. No AML, no KYC, no sign up, no begging people, no counterparty risk. How many millions, hundreds of millions of dollars have been lost to hacks and exchange failures? Hundreds of millions of dollars. Real, true decentralized finance solves that. It also solves lending. It also solves so many things, right? Ownership distribution. Like there's so many things it solves. However, People are retarded and they're not focusing on the things that do work very well, like Hex, Hex works very well, Uniswap works very well. And most of the rest of decentralized finance is bullshit. It is centralized bullshit with admin keys and a couple guys that can make it all go away with press of a button. That's the majority of DeFi. But only a few people like me know the difference between secure audited decentralized software without counterparty risk and all this other bullshit that people are just, oh, they'll buy anything if they think the price will go up fast. It's, yeah. And then they lose their fucking money. And the D, the D in DeFi is decentralized. Yes. Is um, mm-hmm. a major, but a majority of these services are actually centralized. Yes. If, yeah. you were, if your decentralized system uses a price oracle, then whoever runs that oracle can fucking destroy everything with the click of a button. He can just set the oracle price to whatever he wants. And then anything that references it is fucked. It's that simple. If, if your contract can be upgraded, whoever can upgrade it to make it better can upgrade it to make it worse and fucking kill it. Is that what you want? If you want a system that's controlled by a single guy, well, why not get rid of the stupid, slow, shitty, expensive blockchain and just let the single fucking guy run it in Oracle and SQL? Just like Amazon, just like Apple. Be cheaper, more efficient, faster, higher throughput. You just trust the single fucking guy anyway. So I, I know what blockchain's really good for. Everyone else just wants to get rich quick and they get wrecked. And and when, so <laughs> when these service providers, these DeFi service providers, uh, tweet and use the hashtag and what have you, they're actually engaging in false advertising. Then I don't think most of these guys are smart enough to know what's true and false. Like I mean, it's like. They're just stupid fucking people in general. Yeah, so but it's like, a lot of fucking money washing around in this space, mate. So Yeah. Like, Look, you're not going to have to search far for somebody lying on Twitter. 
you're not going to have search far for somebody without ethics. It's, it's going to be very easy to find. But yeah. I like to set, I, I want to speak specifically, right? If you promote people putting their money into an unaudited contract, you are a fucking piece of shit because these people will lose all their fucking money when it goes to zero because software is hard. So it's really that easy. So if you're telling people to put their money into an unaudited smart contract, you are a piece of shit. And how many people are doing that? Fucking everybody. everybody. And to be fair, the whole the idea of auditing uh, a crypto project is a rather new one, right? Um, well, I mean, software has existed for a long time and secure software has existed for a long time, much longer than crypto has existed for. So, you know, these noobs are just so bad at life and business that they, you know, that they, they pretend it hasn't happened. It's so funny to watch the crypto space reinvent all of the horrors of this thing that it's trying to replace. It's like, like it's fucking, it spoils my mind, man. Yeah, no, it's. Hey, we've got rebasing coins. No, that's just, you just put margin and relabeled it. It's just margin. Hey, we got fucking, uh, you know, uh, We've got uh, decentralized ownership. You're like, that's just shares. You, you have shares in a company. That's all that is. Except now you don't have legal recourse. You have a shitty company without legal recourse. Hey, we put identity on the blockchain. No, you didn't. You put some fucking guy in charge of a database that's slow and expensive. That guy can break everything. They get so, they're just so goddamn dumb. They'll just sell you, they'll say anything to get your money with no, no consideration for your security or well-being like it's terrible it is, terrible space it, this is the new realities or the old realities mm -hmm. if you like it's part of my motivation with the movie you know um i'd like to I, i'd specifically like to warn coming the the future generations because they're going to have to be equipped to Amazon have always been around they're always going to be around so i'll tell you i'll tell you what we do i'll tell you what i do on hacks if you go to hacks's website it tells you Crypto can and does go to zero. It can and does go to zero. Now, historically, if you're able to hold through the damn near zero drip dips and it gets back up, you can get 200 million X returns like they did in Bitcoin. Wow, okay, that's crazy. That's the truth, that's the reality. That's the data, right? So here we have something that goes up a lot, but yes, it goes down a lot. So you're more honest. You go on Bitcoin's website, they talked about it going to zero? Nope. You go on Ethereum's website, they talk about it going to zero? No. Do you go on any cryptocurrencies website ever in history and talks about it going to zero no but it does on hex because we're more honest you go on hex it says uh you know if uh this is this is software that you're running that you have to take responsibility for that you have to understand you're lucky it works at all you're lucky it works at all so read the audits consult you know experts but this is this is not free money you have to put work in you know, it, and, and it's funny because actually it is kind of free money. If you're a Bitcoin holder, you can claim it for free. Um, <laughs> closer to free back when the gas fees were cheaper. The gas fees are very expensive now. You know, it used to be like a penny. Now it's like three or $4 or something. So like we do everything more honest, more securely, the right way. And then these masses of fools disrespect us because we speak about price. Price matters to people more so than most other things in cryptocurrency. And I will speak to it and I will not be browbeaten and censored by all these scumbags, you know, who hex does it better, more honestly. And they're just going to have to deal with it and learn over time as they all just die around us. Like, <clears throat> okay, Richard, listen, uh, we've already gone on for almost an hour here. So all right. I'm going to, I think we're going to wrap it up there for now. Po potentially we might reach out again. Uh, sure in the near future to see if we missed anything. All right. Um, and yes, yeah, send that material over that you will do recorded and I'll keep you posted on the production post production. All right. Good luck, man. I hope that you're able to depower the scammers. It's not yeah, an easy much, job. Much appreciated for your time. My pleasure, man. Bye. Bye now.